Yes, please subscribe for our RTL online trainings YouTube. Uh, there we'll be finding some entry questions and also resume preparations related for all Oracle Cloud uh, technologies. It's not only the human capital management, we'll also find for finance, supply chain management, OSES, technical, and uh, also Oracle Cloud, uh, CPQ related issues. Okay. And you will find uh, the errors area wise issues also, for example, when we try to hire an employee, not able to do that uh, due to this error, what could be the reason? So when you are working in the project or when you are applying for an interview or attending for an interview, then it's going to be very useful for you and how it can be clarified. Okay. So now we are going to talk about first module, uh, global HR module. This is common. Global HR module is very common uh, when you are going to apply it. When you are going to apply for any consultant here as a human capital. That is a mandate because every project, global HR will be there. So the question they will ask us like, uh, tell me what you have done in global HR. For example, you applied as the last two years experience in global HR or four years of experience in global HR, what you did in global HR. So global HR mainly five areas, our work will be there, five areas. First one is enterprise structural configuration. Second one is workforce structural configuration. The third one is approval management. Fourth one is workforce life cycle. Nothing but uh, employee hiring, rehire, transfer, temporary assignment, termination, reverse termination, rehire. That's all it comes to. Another one is security. Another one is security. These are main five high level topics. The main global HR is when we are working with enterprise structure configuration, they'll definitely ask you Have you configured enterprise structure for your client? If so, who is your client and which country they have a business? how many legal entities they have, number of business units they have, and what are the different requirements they got other than your cloud SaaS environment, like reference data sets, creations, this all. What documents you have prepared during this particular implementation? So whenever we say that it is an implementation project, you work for as is documents. As is and to be document. For this, we will follow OEM methodology, Oracle Unified Methodology. We are going to follow it. Oracle Unified Methodology. It's a standard Oracle uh, templates across the world. Almost every client is going to follow same format. This templates will be same format. Okay, so in, in, in old ERP, it was a methodology, application implementation methodology. It was for old ERP, means Oracle applications, EBS. But now it is OEM, Oracle Unified uh, Methodology. Okay, so as is document means, what is the business process for the client, current business process? Nothing but current uh, organization structure and what they want to be. It means uh, what they want to implement in fusion applications. Are there any changes they would like to do it? That we are going to prepare. This document we have to prepare here. So in enterprise structure configuration, we need to gather the requirement from the client and document it and get approval from the client after that, we'll go for configure this enterprise structure in the applications. 
enterprise structure in the application side. That's the first one. We already talked about uh, enterprise structure in our training sessions, right? That anyway, we have to go for it. So oh, I'll just show that particular page. So we have two options to go for configure the enterprise structure. One is uh, establish uh, enterprise structure, uh, which is uh, wizard based type to configure an enterprise structure. Another one is uh, we have to go with the manual process. Manually we'll define an enterprise first. After that we'll define the legal entities, divisions, and other options we are going to define, right? like business units, reference data sets. This is all we are going to perform the activities here. So we have already done that. But most of the times uh, when we are working in the project, it will be a manual procedure only. Manually, we'll discuss with the client number of jobs they wanted to have, number of reference data sets required for them according to, and we have to suggest our client whether positions required or not, if required, the number of positions and job structure, position structure, and then we'll go for define the divisions is all we are going to define it. Okay. So this is uh, about an enterprise structure already we have discussed. So the, here definitely they'll expect it. Tell me what is the legal entity? What is legal employer? What is PSU? What is tax reporting unit? And what is LRU, legal reporting unit? And uh, is it mandatory to associate our PSU with LDZ, legislative data group? Can't we do it without LDZ? What LDZ contains? And uh, can we hire an employee for legal entity? Legal entity, we cannot hire employees. Only for legal employers, we can hire, right? Can we configure the legal employer associate with some other PSU, yes. So this is all uh, they will be expecting. What is job, different types of positions. We already talked about the different types of positions, right? So that, that's the first expectation will be from an enterprise structure, okay? So here uh, we can say that, yes, we have discussed, even you have uh, so three years or four years of experience to consult it, we can say that, uh, uh, when with the senior consultant, uh, we have talked with the business users who are there in the on-site and we will be interacting with them and gather the requirements from the clients and prepare a document. That's what we can say about uh, an enterprise structure configurations. Okay, so that's the first one. That is the first one which we are going to discuss global HR uh, interview point of view, what they'll expect. Yes. Next, workforce structure configuration. After enterprise structure is configured, then workforce structure configuration will happen. What is workforce structure? Workforce structure is mainly five documents we are going to prepare or five objects we are going to define. What are those five? jobs, positions, grades, locations, and departments. This all comes workforce structure. This all comes workforce structure. Locations, jobs, positions, grades, and the departments. So jobs are mandatory as we know that uh, for every implementation and positions are optional when the client would like to have the positions uh, for maintaining the headcount in case of restrictions. If the client wants to have some restriction on the positions headcount, or they would like to have some budget uh, calculations for a positions, or they wanted to have the detailed approval hierarchy, in that scenario, we will go with the positions because those things cannot be tracked in the jobs. Most of the service industries will go ahead with the uh, jobs. 
but some additional things are required like detailed approvals or when you need you are going for any other options like uh, budgetary options or the headcount options then we need to go for positions right and grades will be using for payment when you would like to go for uh, pay components like salary and other informations uh, we will be using the grades grades are going to be used and departments obviously it's required for any organization when they are going to hire the worker obviously they have to go for assignment for which department which business unit to which job position grade manager office timings this all comes under assignment right so this all will be specified over here and location of course obviously required uh, when we have number of business units and when we are hiring an employee which location is going to work and uh, this all information will be this locations will be used across the application for example if it is an inventory location we'll access from inventory and other options it is okay so this is about uh, the first two things one is an enterprise structure another one is an workforce structure uh, configuration two things are very very important here because this is the base for your module implementation if something goes wrong here the entire module implementation is going to be failure that's why the discussion between the business users and the consultants uh, will take more time here and uh, get an approval confirmation preparation of documents then we'll go for configure and development instance then put it in testing instance and then move into the production instances and go live that's how it will happen here it is okay. so that's about the first two options okay thank you